Salam alaikum. Okay, let's get into uh, Khabib Nurmagomedov. Where he is from, uh, location, location. <coughs> uh, just look at this mountain, the mountain side. Uh, Khabib is from the mountains. And we're going to look at Sildi, if I can pronounce it correctly. And this is <coughs> Khabib, where he was born and raised, and uh, the population of 210 people, 210 people in this small village, and uh, the word Dagestan, <clears throat> the word dog, dog means mountain, and stan means land, so Dagestan, liter literal translation is mountain land, or land mountain. Um, so this is location, location. Um, I want to go into a bit of background in <clears throat> Khabib and really this is uh, from a respect standpoint. Um, just first of all, the isolation, just look at that, look at the isolation of where Khabib was born and raised and it goes to show you that uh, that a champion, a UFC champion is from here and it's inspiring that anybody from no matter what culture, race, colour, belief system, anything that anything's possible if you believe so uh, I'm going to <clears throat> go into Dagestan here and before I actually show you where Khabib is from um, where he is from I'm actually going to um, this Atomy of a Fader an amazing documentary on the life and f culture um, of the Dagestani people and it's a fantastic documentary and if you haven't watched it already this is a local historian who is with the crew here and <clears throat> He's breaking down the Dagestani culture and the history, but what I'm showing you here is I'm actually going to show you the exact location where this was captured, and uh, I'm going to prove it. I'm going to uh, prove exactly where this location was shot <clears throat> and it's really just to get a more connection to Khabib because first of all I want to start off by saying that um, the interview that I seen with Khabib if you haven't watched the interview Khabib was asked with multiple fighters uh, multiple fighters on stage and the journalist I do not blame the journalist the journalist isn't to blame here the blame is to this new wave of uh, questioning these systematic questioning and respect to Khabib respect brother 
respect because the journalist, I'm a big, big Tony Ferguson fan and uh, mental health is a really dangerous, very dangerous disease. <clears throat> and yes, it's a disease. Uh, it's actually even worse than a disease, at least a disease you can diagnose um, with any other disease, it's observable. Mental health is observable in so many different forms. Uh, and this uh, discussion here isn't me focusing on, I don't want to be talking, I don't want to get uh, too much into it, but respect to be because the journalist had asked uh, on the UFC 249 press conference with Khabib Nurmagomedov and Tony Ferguson, the journalist had asked Khabib what he had thought on Tony Ferguson's mental health problems and his issues with his family. Um, I'm a huge Tony Ferguson fan so I'm well aware of his personal uh, endeavours with mental health and uh, I've had my own problems with mental health and I'm not here to talk about that, I'm just here to acknowledge that what Khabib said here was uh, transcending the sports, it just goes to show you the, the moral qualities that Khabib possesses uh, as a champion and Khabib replied that as you can see here in subtitles, personal here. Just that word personal. Now Khabib is speaking in English and that's not his first language so Khabib's obviously trying to think here. Uh, Tagiliga get the bug ugum. Tommy egg full of Miskiliga. That's me speaking Irish. Uh, that's my Irish language. I never see Connor speaking Eskiliga, so I don't know about Khabib because <coughs> Khabib speaks a couple of languages and uh, for him to actually say it's personal here, I don't talk about his problem. Um, for him to say that in English but to be thinking in Russian um, in the Russian language uh, he is a very very considerate person because this could have come out this could have come out a really wrong way because if you know anything about language there's sometimes words don't match up when you think in the different language so Khabib just was straight and simple here this is a personal issue and this isn't for the media and <clears throat> I just really respect Khabib a lot uh, I did not have any um, I did not have any um, bad feelings or anything towards Khabib but when I seen Khabib say this I was just in adoration um, for Khabib, I was just uh, adoration and admiration, adoration or admiration. I'm not too sure, or is it both? But a lot of respect for Khabib for saying this because we need to be honest here. If this was Conor McGregor here, if this was Conor McGregor, uh, I honestly cannot. If this was Connor, I would see Connor saying something really disrespectful towards Tony Ferguson and his mental health. <clears throat> I could be wrong. Um, I could be wrong, but we did see McGregor at the Cowboy conference being very respectful, but there was bits of bits of character. Uh, where you could see that the, I, I 
still not too sure, but let's focus on Khabib here and Dagestan. I just want to say that that uh, mental health is really dangerous. It is so, 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 so dangerous. In fact, it's so dangerous that um, <clears throat> a very, very close friend of mine lost his sister to mental health and she committed suicide. She was only 26 years of age and nobody knew that it was that bad and um, she felt that there was no other way and I just get emotional even thinking about it but and Khabib said something straight after this that ev everybody has problem and if you watch the rest of the video Khabib says ev everybody has problem and it's true and this is why life is like a fight life is like a grappling match life is like a jiu-jitsu match life is like a boxing match um, because it's a fight every day and you have to improve and become better and mental health is so dangerous that it brings down champions like um, Tyson Fury it brings down champions like Tony Ferguson um, and I also believe it brings down champions like Conor McGregor. I do believe Conor McGregor has multiple mental health problems but hasn't acknowledged it. But uh, it takes uh, a lot of strength to admit that something's wrong. And uh, I think Tony has done that. And you deal with your own... I'm trying not to get too philosophical in my... Uh, discussion here but I see multiple meanings behind what Khabib had said here and he's speaking by the way for every fighter on the stage every fighter has their own mental health problems with um, anger issues maybe compassion empathy sympathy and there's so much different ways to look at mental health and so much respect to Khabib for being a true champion and not embellishing in Tony Ferguson's uh, issues because that's his family and respect to Khabib. So let's get back to, I just wanted to get that out into the air that uh, respect Khabib for that and I noticed a lot of people saying are respectful but mental health is so dangerous so let's uh, go back to Dagestan and as I say Dagestan Dag meaning mountain and Stan is land mountain land so uh, as I showed here in the Sorry, apologies. <clears throat> I'm just trying to figure out the right setting here. So, if you can remember the documentary with um, Khabib, um, Khabib is with his friends and family and this this local historian. And if you look in the background here, the river. Uh, do not know how to pronounce it, but. If we zoom in to Khabib and we are going to go 3D. Okay. So in the background you've got this river. that's running along and slicing through the mountain and it slices through the mountain and moves to the right moves to the right hand side and if you look closely 
if you look very closely um, here there is a v-shaped valley uh, a v-shaped valley that slices through the mountain here and this is a river uh, a smaller river that's running up through and here is a mountain and as you can see on the side where um, there is much many vegetation lots and lots and lots of vegetation and here is vegetation um, coming down this east, eastern face of the of the mountain and then behind the historian you have burr um, it's uh, there's no vegetation here none at all but you can see the vegetation here uh, so when we go back to the maps here that is the vegetation on the east side here and this is the mountain that is behind these guys these guys here and you're probably wondering why uh, I'm doing this this is the type of stuff I'm interested in uh, where exactly uh, where exactly was this uh, so as you can see here this first mountain has this corner just like the pyramids the corner of a pyramid so that's the first corner here and in these images it seems to be in dry season and here was in wet season because if you can remember in the documentary Khabib goes to the farm um, and as I say you can see the v-shaped valley here you can see the v-shaped valley there here that is that here and then you have the this mountain in the center and this mountain here is a bit smaller it has a smaller profile and if you look here slightly smaller this mountain here is slightly smaller and as you can see there is a, a flat face here that's the flat side here and then you have the larger third mountain that runs all the way up to the top see that That is that mountain. So you have one, two, and that's the third. That's the third one. And what we're going to notice is see here, you've got one, you've got one, two, three. One, two, three. And this is a burr rock, burr rock face, just dry, and no vegetation along here. And if you look here, one, two, three. Can uh, you see that? You can see the vegetation here, the um, 
This is all green from uh, lots and lots of water. But uh, one, two, three, back to the image. see here this big slice that's going through this mountain that's there it's quite hard to see uh, but <clears throat> this is how sad I am that uh, I actually found this out so if you look really closely here bend on this river so if you follow me here the river runs uh, meanders through the mountain and then there's a little um, tight bend here and the river shoots up to the right so what we're going to do is Zoom out. Okay. <clears throat> so as you can see here, the river moves up and bends slightly. See this little hook here? that hook that is there and that's the little band there so I just thought I would uh, reveal that and As you can see here, it's another thing I noticed. See this burr? There is a burr here. There is no trees planted. There is um, no plants. And then you look here. See that burr? Khabibs. So I just thought that was very interesting to find out exactly where this exactly was in Dagestan and I have found it. So this building right here this building here is where it was uh, taken from so I thought that was very interesting and uh, we have got here next Uh, here I found out that the only university in all of Russia that has a rope, a rope walking university, uh, they're called rope walkers, and it's the only one in Dagestan. Sorry, the only one in Russia is in Dagestan, and. Uh, it's seen as a form of good athletics and there's actually a origins uh, you're probably wondering of all the places in the entire Russia why does 
Dagestan have rope walking university and no one else? Why doesn't Moscow or uh, St. Petersburg or Siberia? Why just Dagestan? Well, it's actually quite interesting. Uh, the Dagestani folklore. The Dagestani folklore here is uh, what they actually say is that the original settlers of Dagestan actually traveled uh, across the mountains. <clears throat> across the mountains in these ropes and what they would actually do is uh, travel in great great numbers and uh, what they said was it would save um, a lot of time because you didn't have to walk through <clears throat> hundreds of acres of trees and land down mountain faces uh, through rivers uh, you're walking across uh, great uh, dangers of course the rope is also really dangerous but what they said was that these uh, original Dagestani people were being chased and uh, the enemy couldn't believe how fast they could travel and I was wondering um, Is this the reason why? Dagestan because they could uh, Move in great numbers uh, Yes, they're only walking one at a time Yes, but if let's say you have four kings the most important men in the entire kingdom at least those four men can escape and the rest can walk I'm not too sure but this is why these were these clothes these like vibrant clothes here is that what they say is that um, these were the kings and queens of Dagestan and the original people would because they had to travel on rope. Um, what what you're actually seeing here is a, a, a play, and um, a man and a woman fell in love, meeting each other across the rope. A very very nice story. Uh, so that's the type of stuff there, uh, which in Dagestan a part of their culture, and. This image here, uh, a beautiful woman, a uh, beautiful Dagestani girl. Uh, you're probably wondering what the hell is she doing with a silver vessel on her dome, on her head. Well, uh, what I actually read into is that when these kings would be traveling in ropes with their loved ones as you can see here uh, now these people can walk males and males on ropes I do not understand how they do it but they can walk for males on ropes and uh, what the history says is that uh, these men would be so exhausted from walking across these ropes that these girls uh, what they would do is they would sit by close to where it was known that these kings would travel and they would hope that one of the rope walkers <coughs> excuse me <coughs> one of the rope walkers would be so exhausted that uh, he would need some water and she would uh, 
give him water and in hope that the king would be so rich that he could take her as a wife but the reason why it's silver is uh, the same reason why the old saying is born with a silver spoon in your mouth that old saying uh, because the rich this is wealthy this is a very wealthy girl here um, the saying born with a silver spoon in your mouth was because the rich had a lot of money so they would purchase silver silver teaspoons for babies and when the baby was born because in medieval times antibacterial wasn't available that silver was actually antibacterial and water you could put water in silver and it could actually clean and um, it's actually uh, if you look into it uh, silver in a container with water actually has a small electrical charge and they say that it actually electrify, uh, electrifies the head the hydrogen the head the hydrogen so two hydrogen one oxygen in the water and it uh, helps clean the water by electro charging the uh, hydrogen isotopes so is it isotopes? I'm not too sure about two is hydrogen an isotope? Uh, don't know. So that's the reason why this is a very wealthy girl and the hope would be that the exhausted knights uh, coming across the rope would stop the girl and the girl could not touch this so the knight had to actually take it from her head but in order to take it from her head you have to uh, it's a way of saying hello it's it's very it's very very interesting so i looked into more dagestani culture and uh just look at this here uh, we have got a Dagestani carpet and carpets are very high very highly regarded in Dagestan and uh, they're actually so important that uh, yes that price is correct nine nine thousand and 600 pounds for that map and this is a ancient tradition in Islam Salam Alaikum uh, so what you do is you pray on mats and you do not put any valuable items on the floor unless it's on a rug and this is why I believe Tony Ferguson placed his UFC belt on the floor and Khabib would not do it because uh, there wasn't a rug on the floor and I know you're probably going to think that's crazy but uh, Muslims do not do anything unless there is a rug even in Hollywood uh, all global uh, ceremonial awards uh, TV music they even have a red carpet uh, they have carpets for presidents they have carpets for many different um, ambassadors and stuff but carpets are a <coughs> magical item as such They've got the magic carpet uh, in India <coughs> but in Dagestan carpets are very highly regarded and they say if you go to Dagestan um, and you purchase a carpet 
a lot of people make possibly the best carpets you've ever seen and uh, yeah and what I'm gonna do here is show you a article from a Dagestani website like, this is so interesting this is the type of stuff that I really love looking into culture history the reason behind certain stuff but um, Dagestan has a very similar history to us in Ireland a very similar history in the terms of religious sectarian war and uh, I will go into detail on <clears throat> in the terms of uh, information and historical on as you might know my father's murder uh, my father was murdered uh, when I was only six years old when I was na uh, in 1983 1983 uh, my father was murdered in a sectarian war so I will be going into that but uh, I will be getting more into this but I want to focus on Dagestani culture and this is very interesting here this is going to show you the importance of caves and mountains and carpets one of the big reasons why carpets are highly regarded within Dagestan uh, so this place is Dirk I'm not too sure if I'm pronouncing it correctly Dirk uh, so worshipping of the mountains is a widely spread phenomenon this is phenomenology by the way phenomenon is a form of philosophy and uh, I start my philosophy course in May so bring it on uh, four years of study but that is one of my fields of study I'm going to be doing is phenomenology <clears throat> and philosophy so worshipping uh, if you're just listening it's going to be very hard to see the visuals here but a very ancient this is meant to be the most uh, ancient cave in all of Dagestan uh, I'm not too sure about that, but worshipping of the mountains is a widely spread phenomenon which derives its roots from the pre some religions. Okay, that's going to name names. Many famous scientists and writers have wrote about this cave. There is a poem devoted that is written by a Dagestani poet, Admu Muslim Dasaharov. Dasaharov. The cave is shrouded in the mist of mysteries and there is many legends about it some legends say that the cave was a place of the living of the ancient people other legends say that the sword of the first leader of islam in the southern in the southern dagestan arabian military leader mas alama is still kept there according to the old residents the people called the Ellerers lived in it and only godly people could go there and uh, only godly people could go there as the others hadn't been able to come as the rocks at the entrance to the cave would usually close and curse them uh, I think it was close and curse them in uh, like uh, cave collapses they say that uh, sorry for my reading here uh, they say that previously the cave consisted of seven living quarters situated one above the other uh, up, up till now only two have been preserved the rest were filled with stones during the earthquakes which are very often there the floors were covered with thick layers of carpets 
You see, this is uh, a very, very interesting thing that I found out. And it's the same with Hollywood. Do you know what I mean? You go to Hollywood and they will not have one person, not one celebrity, will be allowed in the building without a carpet being laid. So uh, I just thought that was very interesting. You know? Like, is, is there magic, real magic in carpets? And they even say that when you stand on that red carpet, some something happens, there's like a charge. An electrical, I don't, it could be all, uh, seriously, it could be all a load of shit, but um, I kind of believe in these things because I'm uh, a strange person. But the floors were covered with thick layers of carpets and rugs brought by pilgrims. The kerosene lamps standing in the corners of the cave, of the cave illu Ill illuminated. And you could get into the other room using a narrow staircase. According to the local people's words, if you listen, you can actually hear the roaring of the river flowing beneath the cave. The cave has got more per color tree. Sometimes in calm weather, it starts roaring, and the roar is heard in the faraway villages. On hearing it, on hearing it, the people say that the cave demands sacrificing, and they really, and they really sacrifice to promenade. Pro, what the hell's that word say? P R O P I T I A T E. The spirit of the cave. <clears throat> very, very, very strange. Um, of course, you've got different philosophical uh, reasoning to look upon the cave. Yes, it could be the roaring of the cave, but it says here sometimes in calm weather, you would think in storms. You would hear the roar, but it is very interesting that this is also a phenomenon, phenomenology, uh, about this cave. But I would love to know more about this. This is the only article I could find about this cave being apparently you cannot take pictures if you visit. Are not allowed to take pictures and Hollywood is the opposite you know Hollywood's the opposite it just makes you think and Hollywood's like uh, obviously full of the dark arts but um, this is a good thing you know this is like going to uh, what I did read another article that uh, the reason why they would go to the cave is that um, when they bring the carpet up, when they bring the carpet up, that they would bring a particular uh, individual carpet that would suit your taste. So let's say you're the type of guy that's into like uh, certain colors and patterns that they would make this color and pattern exactly for uh, your type of taste and in the afterlife in the afterlife this would encourage you to come back to the mountain and uh, the mountain this is also eagles the eagles uh, watch over uh, and protect the spirits that are in the cave and this is why Khabib has his name the eagle and the name there's mountains also there's many different ways but I did read that uh, but this is so interesting to me and I am going to go into a lot of detail into uh, my father's murder and stuff and uh, 
uh, what actually happened because it's a crazy, crazy story. Um, it's a mad, mad, insane story. And uh, thousands of people died here. It wasn't just me. Uh, I'm just one of many. Um, it was 1983, so I just thought I would go into Dagestan because there's a lot of negative stuff going around here with uh, all this coronavirus shit. I don't believe in it. I think uh, I believe that fear is more contagious and deadly than any virus. Uh, fear not. Don't uh, please don't fear anything. Try to love each other respect each other and I would love to hear uh, from any Russian people or any Dagestani people if I am wrong if I'm wrong in um, my commentary of talking about your culture I apologize but I'm just trying to look into um, Khabib and the Dagestani culture and the history uh, because I'm a big Tony Ferguson fan I love Tony but um, I love the UFC because of characters and people being uh, <clears throat> real genuine human beings I'm not in to watch the UFC for WWE fake stuff uh, and I honestly see a genuine, a real uh, a person with um, real moral standards and a good, great em em empathy and just a great champion. And that's what I can see here. So um, I will be making predictions, but I just wanted to do work of beeps from... Um, about the Dagestani people and I don't want to go into because I did read that Dagestan has uh, many troubles like I'm talking bad bad conflict so I didn't want to go down that route or anything because it's just to uh, look into where Khabib's from and this by the way is the mountain Khabib's mountain uh, that you see in the UFC and that is the border with Georgia right here uh, it's crazy that a mountain separates them but <clears throat> so that is where Khabib's from and if you just look here look at the closest village closest village is miles away look at that five 5.7 kilometers obviously if you're going along all these roads and stuff gets even longer you know if I just go across the top of the mountain it's five but you don't travel that way so that's that and uh, thank you very much for listening and uh, there's way more to come trust me so thank you very much and be well and safe er everybody and visit family members just to tell them that it's okay don't worry fear is contagious fear is more dangerous than anything so peace out i love you uh, 